In this video we've got a river that's flowing at 3.63 meters cubed per second. It's three meters wide and the flow depth is 1.9 meters. And we're asking the question, what happens to the flow depth of the river if we put a bump in the river that's 0.3 meters high? So our river is starting out at 1.9 meters in flow depth. So the initial flow depth of our river is going to be 1.9 meters. So this depth one is 1.9 meters. And we want to know what's going to happen to that depth if we put a step in the river that's 0.3 meters high. So the things we need to think about, first of all, what is the relationship between specific energy in our flow and flow depth. So that relationship is given as the flow depth plus the flow rate per meter length, per meter width, sorry, squared over two times gravity times the flow depth squared. So this is the relationship between energy in our flow and our flow depth. And what we need to know to be able to plot this is what the flow per unit width is. So the flow per unit width is our flow rate over the width of our river. And we're given the flow rate in the question. So we're told in the question that our flow rate is 3.36 meters cubed per second and the width of our river is three meters. So our flow per unit width is 1.12 meters square per second. Once we've done that calculation, using this equation, we can plot the relationship between flow depth and the specific energy in our flow. So I've just done this using Microsoft Excel and I've printed it off and that will let us work out what's going to happen to the flow depth in our river. So. If we begin with what we know, we know that the initial flow depth is 1.9 meters. So what we can do is plot that on our graph and see where we start. So we start out at a flow depth of 1.9 meters. So if we draw a line across at 1.9 meters, so we're gonna draw a line across, that line intercepts the y-axis, the depth on our graph at 1.9 meters. And we're gonna keep on drawing it across until that line intercepts the, uh, the relationship between depth and specific energy. If at that point we straighten the ruler up and we draw a line down, we can see that when our flow depth is 1.9 meters, our specific energy is just above 1.9 meters. So at point number one in our flow, when the flow depth is 1.9 meters, our specific energy is going to be 1.92 meters because that line is just above 1.9 on our graph. So by starting with our flow depth, drawing a line across, then drawing a line down where it intercepts the, the, the profile on the graph, that gives us our level of specific energy, which is 1.92 meters. So our specific energy at point number two is going to be the total energy in the flow above this step. So what this step is actually going to do is reduce our total specific energy because specific energy is just energy in the flow. It's just energy from the flow depth added to the kinetic energy in the flow. So if we put a step in the flow, this step is actually converting some of that energy that was in the flow into potential energy and is therefore reducing the actual energy in the flow that's going to give us our flow depth and our kinetic energy. So the specific energy at point number two is going to be the specific energy at point number one minus the energy we've lost to this step. So minus the delta Z of the elevation of this step. So our specific energy at two is going to be 1.92 minus 0.3. So that gives us a new level of specific energy where this step is occurring in the flow of 1.62 meters. So if we want to work out what the flow depth is 
over this step, what we need to do is work out what the depth is going to be at this new specific energy level. So we started out with 1.92 meters of specific energy, so we were at 1.92 on the x-axis. We've now had a reduction in specific energy because this step has taken energy out of the flow and converted it to potential energy. And our new specific energy is 1.62 meters, so just above 1.5, just above 1.6 on the x-axis. So this is going to be our new specific energy level. And what we've done here is we've just shifted the line on the x-axis down by a value of delta z. So we've just shifted that line down by 0.3 meters. So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. We've just shifted that energy level from 1.92 down to 1.62. And this now gives us two options for flow depth at point number two. Our flow depth can either be this depth here, or it can be this depth here. And the rule that we're going to follow is that we can't just jump about on this profile. We have to follow it around. So our flow depth is going to be the first depth that we come to as we follow it around. So we start out at 1.9. The flow is subcritical. There's no reason to think we're going to transition to supercritical. So we just follow the profile down. And the next depth that we come across is this second subcritical depth here. If we'd gone all the way down and gone past the critical flow depth, then we could believe that the flow had transitioned to supercritical flow and our depth might be supercritical. But because we're just following this curve around and the next flow depth we come to is subcritical and we have no reason to believe that the flow has transitioned, that means our flow depth is going to be uh, subcritical. So to work out what that flow depth is, I'm just going to draw a line across from where that point intersects the profile and the line from that point intersects the y-axis just below 1.6 so I'm going to say that our depth y2 is going to be equal to 1.59 meters So the depth of flow above this step in the flow is going to be 1.5 meters. So y2 is going to be 1.59. And what we can see here is if we consider the total flow depth above the, the base of the channel, if we consider this flow depth here from the base of the channel to our new flow depth, then this depth is 1.89 meters. So we've had a very small decrease in the surface, the water surface, because of this step. So what's going to happen is, as the water goes over this step, it's going to sl very slightly decrease in flow depth by 0.1 meters. Then once we go past the step, what's going to happen, because we've had no transition, to supercritical flow because both of our flow depths have been subcritical then we're just going to revert back to the previous flow depth so we're going to go back up to 1.9 meters so our final depth y3 is going to be the original depth 1.9 meters if we'd gone down past the critical flow depth and we transitioned to supercritical flow then we would be looking for an alternative flow depth. But because all of our depths have been subcritical and we had no transition, we'll just once we go past the step, we're just going to revert back to the original flow depth. So in this problem, y2 over the step was 1.59 meters, and y3 after the step goes back to 1.9 meters. So actually the reason physically why we've got this small reduction in water surface over this step is because what this step is doing is actually constricting the flow. So the, the area that this flow goes through is now smaller because of the step. So if the flow rate remains constant but the area is smaller 
then the velocity is going to have to increase, which is going to cause our flow to drop, our flow depth to drop slightly, which is why we get this really small drop in flow level above that step. So for a simple case where we've got subcritical flow and we're putting a small bump into the into the flow, what we're going to get is a small reduction in our total depth and we can read our y2 off the y-axis of the depth energy relationship like we've done in this video.